Volcanoes get a bad press. They are most in the public eye when tourists have been assailed by lava projectiles, neighbourhoods buried beneath pyroclastic flows, populous shorelines ravaged by tsunamis or planes grounded owing to the ash forecast. But volcanoes mean more than menace and calamity. Dramatic and traumatic as their outbursts can be, most volcanoes, most of the time, are tranquil mountains with diverse microclimates and habitats, and valuable mineral and geothermal resources. If we think of the places where humans have long lived in the shadows of volcanoes, the volcanoes were almost invariably there first. Like our parents, they've led whole lives before we get to know them. They are visual anchors in our landscapes and paint the sky with their plumage. They are supernatural realms, and they can turn the world's weather on its head. Even when their wild days are long past and their flames forever extinguished, their eroded landforms still enliven our skylines and invite outdoor adventure. Wherever we live on the planet, they are more a part of our lives than most people realize. Volcanoes loom at a thrilling crossroads of nature, spirit, climate, geology, technology, society and culture. They play with time, stretching it over a geological epoch, yet able to shapeshift and change everything in the blink of an eye. As portals, they allow us to trace story and memory through deep time and back again. As a volcanologist, I have dedicated my career to observing simmering craters, often at very close quarters, with a view to revealing their secrets. I've followed in the footsteps of pioneers like the American geologist, Thomas Jagger, who established the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory in 1912. I love his description of geology being the science of the dreamland of the Earth's interior, and much of my work has involved recording phenomena at the mouths of volcanoes to help us understand their anatomy and physiology, to visualize their unseen lungs and alimentary tracts. The truth is, I spend a lot of my time imagining the underworld and comparing the quirks and frolics of different volcanoes. They never asked for an advocate, but I am not alone in seeking to translate the language of these sonorous mountains for a wider audience. Volcanoes are hard to ignore, especially if you live near one. We have probably admired and feared them ever since our species evolved in the shadows of Kilimanjaro and other fire mountains of eastern Africa a few hundred thousand years ago. Given their sonic and visual spectacle, even between eruptions, it seems certain the ancestors would have sought to interpret their omens. Volcanoes shaped my perspectives on causality, agency, risk, and how knowledge is built. They taught me to listen to indigenous tribal elders living close to restive craters, to experts in different branches of learning, to the lava breathing within our lively earth, and to the messages, not meant for me, that make their way to the sky. Volcanoes changed me, and I believe strongly that they offer us all a different, an unexpectedly humanizing way of seeing the world.